Hi, I'm Tracy the Lightened Artist. I'm taking a break from the e-bikes today to show you all my e-boat. That's just an old kayak. It's a new canoe. Thank you there, Mr. Played Out Mean Cat. So yeah, this is the Frontier 10 by New Canoe. And I really dig it because of the open plan. And it's basically just like a great big plastic P-Row. So I'm going to walk you guys through all the hacks and mods and tweaks that I did to turn this plastic P-Row into an e-fishing machine. Now you're about to witness some Cajun engineering, but there is no PVC or spray painted crap on this boat and no pool noodles were harmed in the making of this video. There's a lot to go over in this video, so we're just going to start at the bow and work our way back till we get through it all, starting with the hatch. So first I want to show you all not necessarily a hack, but more of a tip. Keep all your hatch gear in a gig bag. So when you're on the water, you just reach over, pull this out, and you can dig in it in your seat instead of like being on your hands and knees digging through a front hatch. All right, so what all kind of goodies do we have in our gig bag? Oh, first and foremost, PFD. Now, I love these self-inflatable PFDs, man. You see how tight that folded up? And when you're on the water, you barely even know you're wearing this thing. They're great. Next is my rechargeable stern light and the pole. This is a hack. Let me show you. You're going to love this. So this is a blind cane that I got off of Amazon for eight bucks. Fully collapsible. And I just threw some reflective tape on there. You got a four foot stern light pole. Now I just got to put a light on it. So this is my camping lantern that I use for my tent. It actually has a little hook so you can just hang it from the middle of your tent. Now it's rechargeable, super bright. And check out the end of it. It looks like it was made to stick on some PVC or something. It actually came with a hook. So honestly, you could bypass the pole and just hang it off one of your guides off one of your rods. But I thought this was kind of a trick. So what I did was took a bike grip, crammed it on the end there, get it nice and tight, and then stick it on the handle of our pole. Bam. Four foot safety light. Everybody will see you coming. And a few more safety items. Got an air horn, beep beep, and a whistle in case my horn runs out of air and there ain't no beep. And there'll be a tweet tweet. And I keep a stringer with me just in case I catch a catfish or a gill hook a fish. And uh, if he's legal, he's din din. And this is kind of a hack. This is actually a plastic box that stick gum came in. I keep my boat registration and my charging cable for my light, a couple of spare fuses and some spare prop pins in there. Minty fresh. And here's something fun. I took a selfie stick, screwed a Scotty mount into the base. That was about three feet long with a GoPro mount. Just stick it right in there. I'm gonna use that as an over the shoulder camera mount. And at the bottom of my gig bag, I keep my spare prop and a prop wrench. So I've never actually had to use this but it lives at the bottom of that bag. Never even know it's there. All right, now I gotta stick all this crap back in here. And yes, there's more crap under here, under my gig bag. So I like to troll. So I have my rod holders with little lights on there. So I got green for starboard. And then of course, red for port. I do have to take the holder off of this one so it'll fit. That's pretty tight. All that crap came out of that hatch. So what I really love about these Frontier boats is that they have this tray up front that's perfect for a Group 24 battery. So I came up with this. Battery, depth finder, and transducer mount all in one. I keep this soft sunglass cover over my transducer while it's in storage. So as for getting power back to the trolling motor, this boat came pre-wired with old school boat plugs. And you don't want one of these tied to your battery with those prongs hanging out. So I use a rubber bike grip again, stick it over there and insulate it. But I'm not a big fan of this being horizontal, so I've got it packed full of dielectric grease. It hasn't been a problem yet. But if it becomes a problem, I'll probably put a rod holder over that and switch to a more modern plug over here on the side. And then of course I got ball bungees on both sides running through these Yak Attack strap holders and 
do that on both sides. That sucker ain't going nowhere. I haven't had a chance to play with this yet. It's a Lowrance hook reveal, five inch version. So it's got GPS, chart plotting, and it's got down imaging plus old school sonar and it has something called fish reveal where it actually mixes the two. So you can have GPS over here and then basically down imaging and old school sonar on this side. It's epic, can't wait to use it. So this is the Yak Attack transducer boom. It's the deck mount version and it's got this auxiliary spot right here for any kind of accessories. Cool thing is all this track mount stuff, all these T bolts and pretty much all this Scotty stuff, it's the same hardware that you'd find on phone mounts, GoPro mounts, and things like that. So I can stick anything I want on there. There's a phone mount, got another phone mount, stick a gimbal on there, put another rod holder, pretty much anything. It's really cool. Next up, I have my smart track control system for my steering. I don't have those mounted into the hull. I actually have them mounted to some aluminum angle iron, and then those are T-bolted into the track system. I feel like it's a lot stronger that way and hasn't done me wrong yet. Then I have these cables coming from the pedals running into some drip line that I got from my irrigation system. And those are running through the seat and then they come on back here where I clip them to the trolling motor. Then there's the Scotty cup holders, got one on each side. These things are ridiculously useful. So you just put a little mount in there and they pop on, pop off. Stick on pretty good though. I'll show you more about those later. And over here I have the Yak Hacker paddle holder. I really dig it. It's probably not as good as the Yak Attack one, but it's one I got, it's fine. Unfortunately, the track system in this boat, it runs all the way through the boat, but it's way off the gunnel and kind of sunken. So you have to add a little piece of track if you're going to add something like this. No big deal, I dig it. So this is one of the older models of the new Canoe Frontier. They have this fiberglass seat base. It's super strong and super light, plenty of clearance, and it's got this quick release latch. So we're just gonna line up our seat on there. And there you go. It's like an old school bass boat seat. The 360 swivel, super comfy. Sitting that all day. <laughs> Starting to look like a real boat now. Moving on to the back of the boat. I just came up with this. It's a piece of two inch ABS drain plug bolted to my T-Track there. And now I'm going to glue a length of ABS onto that. And there you go, net keeper. So I will have to use in a really long extension and tighten that down once I have it glued in. It's all good. Yeah, it's pretty cool and only costs a couple bucks. And on this side, you see I have my Scotty mount for my GoPro selfie stick. And that's a rod holder that I really don't like for my rods. So I use that for my stern light pole. So back here, you see where they molded in a perfect spot for your crate. You can use a one by one or the slightly longer one, but then you'd have to move your seat up a little bit. Uh, you see where I've got these bungees to lock down my crate, but also there's this kind of round bit. Now that'd be perfect for a five gallon bucket. Let me show you. Okay, this is the only five gallon bucket I have handy. It's kind of gross, but you could get one of those five gallon bucket tackle organizers, get a bunch of rod holders or a bubbler for your live bait and use this in lieu of a crate. So that'd be kind of cool for you saltwater guys. Uh, got one better for you. You can put one of these on there and have an on the water potty. <laughs> nah, don't do that. And of course on the rear we have our power plug. And on the transom, I'm using one of those new canoe transom savers. It actually bolts through that rear stern hole. So that means you can't use one of those stern dollies that you would plug in, but I use a regular card anyway. So this is nice ABS plastic and it has a lip on there for your trolling motor to hang on to. I ran for a few seasons without one of these and never had any issues, but for 25 bucks, it really beefs up the transom. So I highly recommend it. And it comes with a couple of extra inner pieces. I guess that's one for the Flint and one for the Unlimited. I'll definitely get some use out of that. That's nice stuff. And here's the business end of the whole operation. Just a little 30 pound thrust Minn Kota. Okay, there's quite a bit of hackery going on here, so I'll try to walk you through it best I can. It's been done a million times, it's just my way of doing it. So obviously I removed the head unit and I just realized that this motor made a liar out of me. Yeah, that's a one inch PVC T spray painted black. 
You can take the boy out of the south, but you can't take the south out of the boy. So I removed the head unit off the motor, obviously, and I used the handle from a tiller extender, crammed it down into the top of that T, ran the power through the third hole, and heat shrank the holy crap out of the whole mess. Yeah, I buy this stuff by the yard. Now for my steering cross member, I used a long coupler nut with threaded eyes screwed into both sides, and then connected it all to the shaft with the U-bolt. I went ahead and heat shrank the whole mess just to make it nice and tidy. Putting this tiller handle on here gives me plenty of leverage to get my motor up out of the water when I'm reaching back from my seat. And that bow light set came with a couple of stern lights too. Why not? And the next step was to turn this into this. Nice. So basically all this is is a big switch housing. Crack all your screws out and remove that switch. Insert it into a dry box of your choice Run your cables from the motor up into the switch, and then from the switch to power, you got a control box. As for the control and power cables running around back here, my crate's gonna manage those, so let's bust that out. So my crate here keeps all my tackle really streamlined. If it don't fit in here, it don't go with me. And that took some doing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Oh, but first let me show you all this. It's a dog crate liner I got from DMB. I slide that under my seat, and it makes all that tackle easy to get through under my seat. Just pull it out, it's like a big drawer. Oh, and I glued in that net holder. So let's check that out. Nice. So the top of my crate is actually a Plano box that I got at Bass Pro. It's molded on the bottom, so it actually locks into the top of a one by one crate. How cool is that? So when I get on the water, this lives under my seat. Inside the crate, first off, we have my little igloo, fill this with ice and Gatorade, and it has these hooks in the handle for hanging off of a fence. And I just hang it right there off my crate, reach back and grab it anytime I need it. As for my anchor, I just use this little pound and a half guy with a length of chain. That makes it heavy enough and it lays nice and flat. So I wanted to show you all this. Obviously you tie your anchor chain to the bottom of the anchor so you can get it out, and a lot of people zip tie up front. Don't do that. Use a piece of monofilament, tie it to the anchor, and then wrap it around the chain and retie it. That way when you snap it free if you have to, a piece of mono stays tied to the anchor and you're not dumping a little piece of zip tie in the water. As for the rest of it, I only keep about 50 feet. It's all I ever need. I uh, keep it wrapped around this line winder that actually comes when you buy rope. And I got a float tied in there. It's a pretty cool little system. I'll show it to you when I show you the anchor trolley. I have all my terminal tackle and all my crankbaits in that box under my seat, but all my worms live in this guy. Check this out, I just got it, I love it. All right, so let's check out my tackle. That's pretty much all there is, these two containers, with many more containers inside of them. I have kind of a Russian doll thing going on with my tackle. So my worm binder is an H2O Express item from Academy Sports and Outdoors. You unclip this and you got this pocket. And that's where I keep my pliers, my nips, forceps with their tethers. And when I get on the water, I just clip these into my cup holders. So that's pretty cool. Then we unzip. And this is my favorite part about it. There's room for a tackle box in here, plus 10 envelopes for soft plastics. And there's even room for my dip. Now the binder came with a different plastic box, but I swapped it out for this waterproof job. I like these because the soft plastics in there stay nice and moist. You can keep stuff in here that's kind of pre-rigged, that doesn't quite work in a binder, or if you use something on the water and it's not quite spent yet, still got some life in it, you can tuck it in here and that waterproof box will keep it nice and fresh. And once I get on the water and I've already opened this up, you don't even have to zip it back up. You just clip it and then stick it back in your crate. In my underseat box, keep all my hard baits, square bill crank baits, all in their own compartment, nice and thin, so I'm not fighting trouble hooks getting all knotted up with each other. And I live in the Northwest, so you always gotta have inlines and spinners and rooster tails. And then all my deep diving and larger crank baits, all in their own little box. Nothing getting all knotted up. Now this is really cool. Check this out. This is just a large fly box by White River and I use it to keep all my terminal tackle. 
on my EWGs, on my worm hooks, on my jig heads, on my tube jigs, my drop shot, wacky rigs, on my bullet weights and terminal tackle. And this has got a magnetic sheet in there. So it all just kind of stays put. And look how thin this is. And it's perfect, man. I can see everything. I can get to everything. It all stays put. No hooks, jumping little dividers or any kind of crap like that. Now it's not waterproof. So if any kind of water gets in here, I make sure to crack it open when I get home and let it dry out. But man, it's a great system. Give it a shot. So this is my anchoring system. The trolley is by Select Designs. It's their premium trolley system. And I picked this one not only because it comes with uh, well nuts, which I really like, but it comes with this. It's a carabiner style loop. So I can actually unhook that, grab my fish grips, clip onto that carabiner, and then clip onto a tree all tethered to my dolly. And that's pretty dope. Now as for the actual anchor, you see I've got it clipped to the side of the boat there, runs through that loop and then down. It's knotted, then goes through a float, and then comes back out and goes around the keeper. Then you've got a couple of pinch points there so that your spare line doesn't run off while you're anchored. And if things get rough, I can just unclip, let that drop away. It'll be under tension, so it'll pull right through and fall away. And that float will let me know where my anchor is. I can come back and get it later. All right, there it is, ready to rock. Everything in its place. Everything can be easily deployed, easily stowed. So these gunnel drains kind of go behind the rail system. That's a good little spot to put your pliers. And this cup holder over here holds my clippers and my hemostats and my fish grips. These cup holders have these slots in them. I guess you can actually lay a rod across there and it holds onto it. I just stick it in there and fill them full of spent lures. And you can see how well my paddle rides on there. It's super stable, doesn't flop around. That paddle holder actually has tethers, but I never have to use them. And if you can see in there, I keep a Velcro strap to keep my cables up off the deck. And my sister made me these really cool lure keepers to wrap around your crankbaits when they're rigged to your rod. Also makes a great flag, because it's a flag. So that's all I got for y'all today. Man, there's a lot of stuff on this little 10 foot kayak. I didn't realize how much crap I put on here until I started filming. So I couldn't get into too much in-depth detail on any one particular thing. If there's anything you wanna know, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to answer. Um, I'm gonna link as much of this stuff in the description as I possibly can. And I'll definitely be making some more videos. If you dug that, you wanna see more, do me a favor and slug that bug. Maybe throw me a like, I really appreciate it. If you're into e-bikes, I also do e-bike videos. Walkie's sending me the newest step-through version of the H6. So I'll be doing a video on that here soon. And I'm about to do a video about the gearing on these e-bikes. So if you're into that, definitely stay tuned. Check me out. Check out my other videos. I really appreciate you. I'm going to get out on the water and finish this bag of taco sunflower seeds. Tight lines. Cheers. That's just an old kayak. It's a new canoe.